my beautiful pumpkins and welcome back to the pumpkin patch. If you are new here, hello, my name is Chloe Taylor and I believe that we have the most autumnal, most beautiful, fall-esque, cozy corner of the internet. So if you like me, you like my style, my vibe, how I read, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and become a member of the pumpkin patch. And, uh, I also like to remind those of you that do not know or are interested, we do have a Patreon where if you want to support this channel even more, you can join, you get early access to all of my pick a cards that you see here, uh, exclusive pick a cards that you won't get anywhere else, weekly energy, bonus content, horoscopes, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure that you head over to the Patreon if you think that you might be interested in that. Uh, link is going to be down below for you. Now, today's reading... I need to tell y'all, I am so excited about this reading because this is the first time we have ever collaborated with another tarot card reader. And today, this video is actually in collaboration with It's Liv here on YouTube. And she is such a queen. I want y'all to make sure that you subscribe to her, that you go to her video that she is putting out today. If you're seeing this on the YouTube channel uh, today, she is putting out a video as well. And it's kind of like a pick two. So basically, I am doing what blessings are coming for you over the next two weeks. And Liv is going to be doing guidance that you need for the next two weeks as you're receiving these blessings, basically. So they go together. And uh, I do really feel like, and we have discussed this, me and Liv, um, we have discussed that we really feel like our energies are very similar. So if you like her, we feel like you're going to like me. If you like me, you're going to like her. So definitely make sure you are checking her out. And like I said, these videos go together. So you're getting like a big comprehensive reading in one and you get to choose twice. So make sure that you are doing it. Um, and also, I mean, Liv is just such an incredible individual. Y'all are not going to be disappointed going over to her channel. I promise. She is such a beautiful spark of inspiration, of love, of lights. I genuinely love her pick of cards and all of the content that she creates over on her channel. And I'm so happy to be able to share her with y'all. And also I have to say just before we even get into it, uh, I need to say thank you so much, Liv, for even agreeing to collaborate with me on this video. I'm so honored that uh, we could even come together. So thank you so much, Liv. Uh, I'll have her channel and the video in the card section as well as linked down below and all of her other links. But let's go ahead and get into it. So if you know how pick a cards work, this pile is going to be pile number one. This is going to, oops, this is going to be pile number two. And this is going to be pile number three. Um, pile number one has a purple fluorites. Pile number two has a piece of rose quartz and pile number three, this is a kind of like a raw cut amethyst. So, uh, you may want to choose based off of the crystals, off of the timestamps. Maybe you saw something in the, um, in the thumbnail and that was kind of how you wanted to choose. Uh, just know that you are never going to choose wrong. Uh, this reading also does not seal your fates. I am reading off of the current energy for the next two weeks. So whenever you come across it or potentially your energy shifts and you make a change. So know that this does not seal or control your fates and uh, you're never going to choose wrong. You can choose more than one pile. Uh, some people even like to listen to all three piles and then they will come back and decide which one really fit them the best for the time period. Uh, and you can also come back to this video again and again and choose a different piles when you feel called to do so. So um, you're never going to choose wrong. And I believe in you pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up the meditation music and give you some time to sit with these card piles. And then we're going to get into these blessings.
pile number one. If you chose the purple fluorite double ended points, love this. I use this crystal a lot like a wand, like, um, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's very wand like, um, but this is going to be your pile. So we'll just go ahead and stick that up there for you. And we have for you the emperor, the four of cups, the 10 of wands and the six of swords. So in the next two weeks, I genuinely feel, I know this card looks very dramatic, the 10 of wands, but hear me out. Um, I actually feel like something in your life is coming to a close. This is, and this could happen like within a couple of days and then you see kind of the rest of the culmination of the two weeks. But I feel like something that has been a really long journey for you that maybe has come with a lot of trial is coming to a close for you. This is the biggest blessing that spirit is bringing to you. And I like this because whatever this is that has been really weighing you down, it's maybe also made you feel like very sorry for yourself and had like a lot of self-loathing, self-pity. It's bringing you like once this is put down, you're going to feel so much more free because the six of swords tells me that you are about to embark on a new journey, a new way of being a new, like you are just kind of done with feeling bogged so far down. And the emperor also tells me that like, you've had a lot of responsibility on top of you as well. I think whatever this is has come with a great responsibility. Like some of you maybe have been like finishing out school stuff, um, trying to go out for a promotion. Maybe you've even been trying to expand your family or you've been dealing with like a really rocky romantic relationship. I feel like whatever this is, it is something bigger. Or maybe some of you have maybe even been in like a house negotiation, like you're trying to get a house and it's been really rough. And spirit is confirming that the blessing that's coming to you is whatever has been hard or difficult. Um, maybe even just like mentally, I'm hearing also you've been really struggling. And spirit, is saying this time is coming to a close and you're going to be moving in a new direction because of it. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not getting what you want because I actually think the 10 of wands is it's like with great power comes great responsibility. And I feel like with the 10 of wands, this is actually like the receiving of that thing, but now you can get such relief. So if you've been waiting for something this is a sign that in the next two weeks, it's going to finalize itself. And with the emperor coming through, like I said, I think it's been something that's been like a heavy responsibility on you. But I also feel like because of this situation, you are going to be coming out from it with a like, obviously, we hope you never have to deal with like really hard situations again. But I do feel like there is a fly hanging out in our video. Obviously, this situation has been very annoying because flies usually symbolize like pests or being pestered. Um, so whatever this is, it's been like very annoying. But the emperor signifies to me that like you are bossing up, you are becoming the boss of your life, the person that is going to be calling the shots. And I feel like for a while you haven't felt that energy, maybe even with this like Leo new moon that has just passed. Uh, we had a Leo new moon on 8-8, uh, which so August 8th, uh, when y'all see this on YouTube anyways, uh, it will have happened like last Sunday, um, which is funny because that's actually the day the video is being filmed. But I feel like maybe even with this new moon, like that energy has been gaining momentum for you of like personal power. So I like that. I think that that is a really good, like what a great blessing. And we still have more stuff. Rest assured. I've got all these Oracle cards to look at with y'all, but I feel like as far as blessings go, this is like this is something that comes as a great relief. Like maybe you even feel like you can sigh a great relief right now. If y'all want to do that with me for just a second, it might feel really good. Let's breathe in for a count of four. And on the exhale, I want you to drop your shoulders and sigh out loud. Okay, so let's do it. <sighs> oh, doesn't that feel good? Breathing. <laughs> okay, so we also have for you the card of the uh, one or the ace of water. And we also have for you the card choice. I don't feel like this has been easy. Again, I didn't feel that anyways, because we had the 10 of wands coming out. I don't feel like what this is has been easy for you. 
And it hasn't come without having to make a lot of choices. But what Spirit is saying as far as like the gift that is coming over the next two weeks is you are actually starting to realize that you are more of a power player in your own life, that you have the ability to make choices. Like every day you have the choice to say, do I want to sit here and remain in self-pity? Do I want to sit here and cry about it? Do I want to? And that's fair. Like, I'm never going to be the tarot reader that tells you, like, don't sit in your, don't wallow in your feelings. Like, wallowing is part of the healing process. So do what you need to do. But as much as you make the choice to be sad and to wallow and let those emotions bubble up to the surface of what you're dealing with, you also are starting to realize that you have a choice to change that around. You're able to process to feel, but you're also able to make the choice to smile, to play uplifting music, to make small, subtle changes in your day-to-day life that are going to help you close this cycle out and move into something better. You are the person that is in control of this situation, even if it feels out of control. You Like it might be out of your control as far as like, let's take the housing example, right? Maybe you're not the person that gets to make the final decision of if you got the house or you didn't, but everything, we always have a choice in how we respond to the situations. We can't always control situations, but we always have a choice on how we, how we decide to respond. And that is what spirit is telling you is like, you have a choice. And with the the ace of water, this is saying that like your cup is going to be getting filled regardless. Um, your cup is going to get filled so much in the next two weeks that you are going to be overflowing with abundance, with goodness, with joy, with support, with love. And I feel like ultimately that is something maybe you haven't felt for a while. Um, It's, I'm almost feeling like some of y'all have been feeling very disconnected from your spiritual self or yourself in general. And that has taken such a huge toll on you that it's almost like I'm getting this feeling of like, I feel like I'm never going to be happy again, or like I'm never going to not feel this way again. And spirit is saying over the next two weeks, like there will be a shift in the energy. You are going to be feeling better and to hold out hope for that because it is coming. Now, we also have for you the card of fertility. Now, those of you that are trying to get pregnant, this is a great sign. This is a, maybe you are going to be like in a fertile window in the next two weeks, getting news of a pregnancy. Now, because these are blessings, I want to remind y'all, if that's not what you're into right now, and you're not trying to get pregnant, then this is not your blessing. Like, I don't, I don't do like pregnancy scares, you know, that's not no. But if this is something that you are wanting, this is a golden opportune moment where that could be coming to the surface. And either, like I said, you're going through a very fertile window, or you could be finding out that you are pregnant. Now, fertility doesn't just mean pregnancy. Fertility is also fertility of the mind, of the body, of the expansion of self. So, This is also like, let's actually read this. It says the frequency of fertility invites us to be more open, more courageous, more creative, and more joyful than we, than we were before. It activates the potential for something beautiful to grow from our consciousness into a new and grander expression of ourselves. So like I said, this is about expansion of self. This is growing something new, be it an actual human life or something creative. It's feeling a sense of passion coming back to us, a sense of groundedness that maybe we feel like we've lost or had lost before. So I think this next, I think in this next two weeks is literally going to be a brush, breath of fresh air for so many of you. So we also have the card of the vulture and the vulture I like the message of the vulture because to me it's very protective and I feel like spirit is also saying that you will have the blessing of protection. You don't need to worry about what you, what joy you find, what happiness you find, what movement starts to happen. You don't need to be fearful that it's going to dissipate and go away, that you're not going to feel it again you actually can delight in knowing that you are so divinely protected in holding this emotional state in holding. And now granted, we know that emotions, like we're going to feel sadness again in our lifetime at some point, but spirit is saying, 
stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. Stop waiting for your good feelings for this momentum, this energy to go away. Let it just be here and enjoy it. You are protected in experiencing it. And that's like the biggest message is stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. Stop waiting for your energy this time to run out. Know that it is safe for you to have this beautiful expansion of self, this movement into a new thing, this letting go and releasing of what has been weighing you down. And we also have for you the card, the pink opal, be kind to yourself. Oh, how did I know that we were going to get something like this? Many of y'all have not been being very kind to yourself. And I feel like that is really about to change for you, especially those of you that struggle with being kind to yourself. Like the second you think a nice thing about yourself or somebody compliments you, I'm hearing like immediately you're like, oh, no, no, like not me or you know, somebody says, oh, what a nice dress. And you're like, oh, I got it in the garbage. Like, instead of just saying thank you and letting your dress be beautiful, you immediately have to like downplay it in some way. Now, there is nothing wrong with getting a dress out of the garbage. I'm not trying to say that. Um, I'm just trying to say like, especially if you feel like that is a put down for yourself. It's like, you have to start accepting the compliments. <laughs> and I think you will be. I, I really, I think that you're getting an evolution there of feeling like, like it's not just like, oh, be kind to yourself, blah, 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 everything will change. It's like you actually actively become a participant. And this, the same with this choice card, we also have a choice of how we think about ourselves. We actually have the power to change the way that we think. And Yes, when you have a neural pathway that like fires off the same thought process day in and day out, it's difficult to change that thought process, to change it to be kinder, to change it to be something better that you actually want for yourself, to get yourself to believe the good things about yourself. But I am living, breathing proof, my friends, that it is possible. And it's really great. This might help some of you that are struggling with this. It's really great if you can identify the thoughts that you have about yourself that are more negative, give them a name. Like when I start to think anxious thoughts or when I start to think like me nitpicky thoughts, um, my alter ego that is really negative has a name <laughs> and I'm, I, I'll say like, Oh, so-and-so's being bitchy again today. Like she's just not on our side. You need to knock that off. Like, I love you such and such, but like, we're not doing that today. Or instead of giving it like a human type name, you can give your thoughts like, oh, that's my anxious thought. Like, and they can just be that you can be the observer of how that thought manifests instead of attaching a whole story to it about how you're so anxious and now everything is going to be off kilter today. Like it takes time to train your mind to go in that direction. But over time with repetition, your brain will just stop trying to do it. And I have found that, like I said, very time consuming, not the easiest work you will ever do. It's called work because it's work. But it is so incredible when you finally realize and it like, it's like, have you ever heard the TikTok where where someone's like, you know, such and such happened and then the music escalates and it goes, oh, Lord, <laughs> like those of you that are on TikTok, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's like that when you actually start to retrain your brain on how you think about yourself, you won't even realize that it's changed until like six months later and you're like, oh, Hey, remember when I used to think all those really awful things about myself and how I don't anymore? The same thing applies to having boundaries with people. It it takes time and it's a process and it's harder in the beginning, but it gets easier and easier every time you use it, every time you use the tool. So I hope some of those things are helpful for y'all. Now we also have for you, oh, this is a beautiful card. I'm going to cry y'all. We have the golden healer quartz and it says, open the door. I feel like a lot of you have really felt trapped in the dark and my heart is, it makes me really sad that any of y'all have to feel that, you know, as somebody that has been through that a few times, like it's devastating, it's depleting, it hurts. And especially if you feel like every time you cry out to the universe, you're just leaning on deaf ears or nothing is out there to hear you or, you know, it's painful. It's painful to be in that kind of situation. And Spirit is ultimately saying, trust yourself enough to open a door. There's a door present for you. And that is a gift that is 
has it's I feel like the door has actually been there. We just maybe haven't been seeing it. And spirit is saying this door is blessed. Like this door for you is available. You can open it and you can go down it and go down the path that it leads through because it's beautiful. And it's, I'm seeing like somebody trapped in like a dark room and then you open this door and it's just this beautiful garden. Like that is the land that you are traveling to. And that is the blessing that is coming. So open the door. Don't be afraid to open the door. It's there for you. Now, you are also the pile that got three cards. I don't know how that happened, but y'all got three of these. Um, we have just some affirmers for you. Um, and let's see what they say. So we have, I don't even, impermanence. Okay. I was like, what is this word? Impermanence. Life is always changing and I drift easily through those changes, good and bad. As I drift through hard times, I can take comfort in knowing that I will leave them behind. As I drift away from the good times, I can take comfort in knowing that the more, that more will come my way. Impermanence is an equal opportunity, non-entity. So kind of like what I was saying earlier in this reading you know, it's, we're going to have sad times again. We're going to have good times again. Know that impermanence is really the gift of this life. You will, you will find that joy. And I believe in the next two weeks, it's going to be obvious to you where that joy is going to spring from. And, oh my God, <laughs> that's funny. I'm sorry. Literally, you also got the joy card. <laughs> it says, to enjoy something, I simply need to add joy to it. Joy is like butter. I can put it on anything and it'll make it way better. Today, I will add joy to everything. Really slather it on. Today, I am the Orville Redenbacher of joy and life's popcorn is about to get it. So find joy wherever you can in this moment, at this time. It's joy really can be found in almost anything. Now I say almost because there are some situations that are just not meant to be joyful, but joy can be found in most situations. And there's always a silver lining. Every mushroom cloud has a silver lining. That's I that song just came to my mind. It's, um, it's an owl city song. Every mushroom cloud has a silver lining. I can't remember exactly. If y'all like Owl City, you probably know which song I'm talking about. But it's like, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and paint that like your life is all sunshine and rainbows if it really hasn't been. But I promise you'll smile again. I promise you'll find joy again. I promise that you'll be happy again. And Spirit is saying within the next two weeks, that is what you are getting. You're receiving more joy. And this fly really just wants to be here in this reading. <laughs> <laughs> you will find joy in life again. You will smile. You will laugh. And I know it might feel right now like maybe that hasn't been what you've had. So it's hard to believe, but you will. And then we also have confidence. In this moment, I take a step back and look at myself with the pride of a good mother. I see an abundance of abilities and talents that show up all the time in big and little ways. If I could stick myself on the refrigerator, I would. I would invite all the neighbors over and say, look at that. Can you believe that? An A plus that is. Can you believe what an A plus that is? Um, yeah, I feel like interesting that it would say like, I look at myself with the pride of a good mother because I also really do believe in and teach the concept of reparenting the self because a lot of us, not everybody, some of us had great parents, but a lot of us have had some really fucked up parents that have not known better, but they have done or said things that have really stuck with us and hurt us. And this is why reparenting as an adult, becoming the, the own wise inner parent is so important and starting to give yourself the, oh, I'm proud of you or validating the self or, you know, giving yourself the love and deep guidance that maybe you didn't receive early on in your journey. It's so important. And I always recommend the book, um, How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicola Perra. I feel like this book really breaks it down. She does a great job at talking about how we can reparent ourselves. And y'all, I just need to say, like, I think it was like a month and a half ago. I might have only mentioned it on Patreon, but like, I was really going through it mentally. And I'm starting to see the other side of that. I'm working with a therapist 
list. I'm, you know, there's, there's been a lot that's kind of gone into it, but I have to tell y'all if like, this is any, I don't like, I'll, I'll link the book down below for you too. But if this is like any testimony of like how well those principles actually work, if you put them into practice, like I really felt like that this feeling of like, I was never going to be happy again. And I just felt so terrible. And um, I started making small promises to myself every day of like just taking care of me first thing in the morning, not immediately jumping to work or catering to everybody else. And within three days, I really started to feel better of just like prioritizing a workout and a meditation in the morning or prioritizing like drinking a glass of water every morning. It can be things that are so small, but what happens is when we start to ignite that trust of ourselves in the brain, we create this neuro pathway that says, ah, oh, I can trust myself. I do have follow through. So, you know, it, Re work on that work on the reparenting because that is something I feel like as you receive these blessings you're going to need that as part of your journey so especially because it came up here that's really interesting but I hope this reading helped you out pile number one do not forget to check out Liv's video as well like I said it's linked down below and it will be in the card section um, do not forget when you stand up in your own authenticity you empower everyone around you to do the same if you would like to tip me for my readings I have my cash app Venmo and PayPal listed down below uh, I don't expect it from you, but I certainly appreciate it. I also have my Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's a great way to do it. I have my podcast. New episodes go out every single Tuesday. The day this video is going up on YouTube, there's a new episode out. Uh, so definitely make sure that you are checking out the podcast. And uh, is there anything else? Am I forgetting something? Oh, yeah, of course. Instagram and TikTok. I'm at Chloe Taylor. Definitely make sure you follow for more good stuff. And uh, I will speak to you all again real soon pumpkin i love you so so much thank you again to live for collaborating with me on this video bye all right pile number two if you chose the rose quartz then this is going to be your reading so we have for you the seven of pentacles the four of wands the seven of wands and the fool and i feel like this is like so much goodness <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost, blessings coming to you. Now, obviously we're going to get a lot of messages, but I'm just going to do my best to be an open channel and filter through. But I feel like first and foremost, let's talk about, we'll go through each card individually over the next two weeks. So the seven of pentacles, I love the way that this deck really portrays the seven of pentacles because I've never seen one like this. We have a masculine and a feminine basically sitting over a cradle that's empty, but it looks like the feminine is um, carrying a child. So um, or like is pregnant. And so I feel like for some of you, obviously not everybody, but for some of you, those of you that are waiting for news on pregnancy, this is a really good sign. You know, we don't get pregnancy, um, too much in readings, but when it comes out in my readings, I always like to call it out. Um, so some of you that have been waiting for that big fat positive on a pregnancy test, I feel like this is something that will be coming over the next two weeks. I also really feel like some of you, over the next two weeks might just be making the decision to expand your family. Um, and that maybe has been a really long time in coming. So uh, I feel like, especially if like you or your partner, one of you hasn't been in sync with the other one, that could be a blessing that's coming that the two of you are going to be on the right or on not the right path. My, my bad. That's not what I meant to say on a similar path. And you're going to be coming together. Now the seven of pentacles, normally does not dictate pregnancy, but in this card, like I said, it definitely does. But if you're somebody that's not looking for that, that's not where you are in your life right now and possibly never will be if that's just like something you never want. Um, the seven of pentacles also brings the blessing with it of basically having the space to take stock. The seven of pentacles is all about like tending to your harvest so that you can, or really tending to your garden so that you can have a bigger and better harvest long-term. And so I feel like some of you might be getting like new inspirational ideas, um, especially when it comes to your finances and how you can make money for the long term, something that's a little bit more sustainable. Um, there's also this message that I'm getting of like, 
just having the space to even take the time. Many of you maybe have been feeling like you haven't had a lot of time to just like get into your creativity, get into your process. Um, there's been something that's kind of been missing there. And I feel like over the next two weeks, you're going to be able to get more into that and have the time and space and not even just the time and space, but like the energy to do it, um, to actually set aside time to think about what you want to do next. And then with the four of wands, whoever chose this pile, I do feel like it is heavily focused on the home and family because the four of wands is also, we have like the same couple depicted here, here. And I'm mean, at least, no, it looks like it's the same couple truly. Um, but with the four of wands, this is about having like a happy, stable, supportive home life. And this also can talk about moving to a new house, getting your dream house. Um, something really good is going to be coming for your home. If you're not someone that's looking to move right now, it also could be that you're just doing renovations or you're getting like new furniture, new decorations. Maybe you're pulling out all those fall decorations. Now, you know I had to say it because my channel, it's fall all year round, honey. But I know... I know not everybody loves fall as much as I do. I, I like to think that most of us do, but um, especially on this channel, but I do feel like maybe some of you are pulling those decorations out a little early, or maybe you're like big into the Yuletide season and you're pulling out that stuff really early. I feel like truthfully, if my humanness can come out for a moment, I feel like 2020 really took so much from us that if you find joy in having your Yule tree up all year, then like by all means, please do it. And don't let anybody shame you into not having that joy in your life. Okay. We don't have time for not experiencing joy. So, um, I do feel like it could be that though. It could be that we're like decorating the space, change something on your home. Like there is a blessing coming for your home. So if it's possibly adding a member to the family. Um, it also could just be that like, maybe you're getting like an unexpected windfall of money so that you are able to, um, I'm actually hearing that for some of you, that's true. You're getting some unexpected money from somewhere and you're going to be able to put that towards your house. Like there's something you've wanted to do with your home and, or apartment or condo or whatever that you haven't had the financial freedom to do it previously, but something is coming your way so that you are able to make your home a little bit more like your desired dream. Or some of you might actually be moving into a desired location or like getting word on it in the next two weeks. Then with the seven of wands, this card usually talks a lot about like persecution or people like coming for you. But I feel like the thing that we don't talk about enough with the seven of wands is that I feel like the blessing that's coming is like this stuff would normally really bother you. Like you would take it to heart and feel really defeated about it, but you just don't care. Like you have something about your aura. Spirit is saying like something about your aura is very protected. And like that negative energy that maybe is being thrown towards you isn't even able to penetrate into you. Like you, you don't care basically is what like I'm getting. And something I want to point out to you is that, number one, anybody who criticizes you wrongfully, now we can take constructive criticism, of course, but anybody who, can, who criticizes you wrongfully, you have to remember that you're never going to be criticized by someone doing more than you. It's only going to be somebody who's doing less. And just keep doing what you're doing. Know that these, like, even if we look at the card itself, we have all of these beautiful mermaid creatures kind of coming for this scuba diver that's maybe in, they feel like threatened by this person, basically. And I feel like with you, that's really what it is, is they feel threatened by you. Like seeing you succeed or do something that you want to do, it feels like a threat because they haven't let themselves have that. And that I feel like is really what you're realizing is it's not about you. It's about the pain that they carry within themselves. And 
I feel like in a way, a blessing that's also coming is like, you're also realizing that maybe the people that you normally connect with are just not the right support system for you. And you need to go elsewhere to find the support system. And I know that that one maybe doesn't sound so much like a blessing because it can be really hard, but in the long term, I feel like it's going to help you to venture out of your shell more because we have the fool. So we have this, like, basically this, it almost looks like she has like a mermaid tail, but then she's like gaining legs to go on shore and almost like a little mermaid type of vibe. But the fool is this very like magnetic individual that's, basically is like very like carefree and is able to go forth and do what they're, they want to do and pursue their passion and move through life in a way without really caring about the consequences. And I feel like for you, maybe you're somebody that has always cared about the consequences. And so this energy could feel really empowering for you to feel like, Oh my gosh, why not me? Why can't I, you know, instead of saying like, Oh, not me. It's never me. It's more like, why the hell not me? You know, why can't I have A, B, and C and do this and do that? And I feel like you're really getting a shift in perspective that is going to cause you to venture out and do what it is that you want. So ultimately, I do feel like we're getting a boost in confidence, which doesn't surprise me because we are in Leo season. Leo, their biggest thing is about, like they are about confidence. Okay. Um, so I feel like we are getting like a really good boost in confidence and in our home life in the next two weeks. Now, we also have for you the cards of the maiden. And we also have for you the journey. And um, I do link all my decks down below, by the way, if any of you are curious where these come from. But with Maiden and Journey, these kind of go hand in hand, if you'll notice. <laughs> Both of these cards, they have a path behind them. Um, the maiden has one, it looks like behind her, like she's come from there and she's journeyed into the forest. And then the journey card, it looks like we're kind of in the middle. We've already come from this path originally, and we're kind of traveling more into the thicker, darker parts of the forest, but we have a choice to make if we want to keep going or if we don't. And I feel like for you, first and foremost, this maiden card is, I know I say this all the time, but um, with this deck in particular, the maiden is one of my favorite cards. It is a card that I have seen many times when I've looked for myself. And it's a very beautiful card about learning yourself in a new way. And not, oh my gosh, why am I crying? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes when spirit comes through, like this can, it, it, it gets emotionally intense. Like it's about learning yourself and moving. Like it's not even about moving into the next phase necessarily because you still have to be the maiden archetype. Everybody goes through this. You know, we have, it doesn't matter how you identify the maiden, the mother and the crone. Everybody like goes through these archetypes at some point. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be an actual mother. It, it can be other things that resemble that motherly energy. But today we want to focus on the maiden. And the maiden is... It has such like a deep sense of innocence to it. And the maiden also like takes her time on the path to like, you know, that saying of like, stop and smell the roses. Like that is the energy that the maiden brings to the table is like somebody that really pays attention to nature and beauty and everything around them and abundance. And this honestly sometimes can come as like your consciousness waking up to a new state because sometimes like we will go through life on autopilot and this is normal. Everybody has stages that are on autopilot, you know, even myself, you know, I consider myself to try to be more conscious and I've worked hard on that, but there are still things that I do on autopilot. It's normal for us to do that. But I feel like for you, you're kind of waking up to more than that. You're waking up to allowing yourself to see the world in a more beautiful way. And in the next two weeks, I feel like that's going to come as a huge relief. And I think that's why my emotion kind of peaked a little bit there is I feel like your soul is just wanting rest so badly. And that is what is coming up. 
in order for you to receive rest, you have to slow down. And I'm sorry if you can hear that. My, literally, my neighbor just confirmed it for you. He, I just heard him go, ah! I don't know if the microphone picked it up. Um, he plays a lot of Call of Duty <laughs> next door. But um, I feel like maybe that was your energy of thinking about slowing down. Ugh, you know, like maybe it's just something you can't even fathom doing. But if this is a blessing that is coming for you, again, kind of like with the... Um, the seven of pentacles. Remember we talked about how you'll have time to slow down to actually do this. So it will be a really beautiful gift. And I think what's interesting is <laughs> I just got that song in my head into the thick of it, you know, from TikTok. I think it's like from something else, but I only know it from TikTok into the thick of it. I feel like that's really the blessing. Like you're going to have to make a choice in the next two weeks. And both pathways have blessings for you. You're going to have to make a choice to continue to go into this journey of self, of understanding you, of going deeper, or of kind of staying in the innocent side of things. And ultimately, it's your choice to make. There are gifts from either side of the path, but it's really about where you feel the most comfortable to journey right now. Know that no matter what, this is a blessing, though. Something that is being open to you and awakened to you is, like, your reading is deep. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't even, like, the words are coming out all scrambled. But no matter what, this is innately a blessing for you. No matter which way you decide to go, the journey is yours. The choice is yours is what I'm hearing. And... I do feel like in the next two weeks, you're going to have an opportunity to make a decision about like maybe doing more shadow work, going more into self. Maybe like somebody invites you to like a group meditation for the inner child. Something that is like big that is going to shift you in a new way is coming up. And I noticed that there's even a butterfly in the corner of this card. I've never noticed that before. And butterflies, we've talked about it so much on this channel. But butterflies are one of the biggest symbols of transformation. So I do feel like that's kind of another thing about this card is, yes, the choice is yours, but the ultimate transformation comes from going into the darkness, from going into the part of the forest that might seem a little spookier, <laughs> um, but ultimately you'll come out forever changed. Now, we also have for you the cards um, Magic. And let me actually read this one. It says, the frequency of magic supports our in intrinsic ability to grow and expand beyond this moment, to move toward possibility and expressions that are as grand and profound as we can imagine. All that is required is our belief in our manifestation. So I do feel like those of you that did like any kind of magic or manifestational practice over the Leo New Moon or even in like the recent past, I do feel like something else that is coming in the next two weeks is your manifestation is going to come to light, meaning something that you set intention for is going to like smack you in the face, not in a bad way, but in a way that you will be so astounded that you will have no choice but to believe in your ability to bring about your desire. That is a very powerful message in and of itself, especially if you're somebody that really struggles with that. Um, we also have for you the card of the golden egg and this card, we've seen this card recently on my channel as well. Maybe you've seen it in another reading here, but the golden egg, I always am reminded of Harry Potter. <laughs> um, also trans people, trans women are women and trans men are men. And I feel like I always need to insert that because we can you know, like the Harry Potter story as much as we want to, but like, just know that this channel absolutely stands for that. We do not support JK Rowling's ideology in this chat. Absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> if you know anything about that, you may not, but just putting it out there. So, however, with the golden egg, um, it reminds me of Harry Potter in the fourth book and movie. Most people are more familiar with the movies. I have done both. I've read and seen. But um, with the golden egg in the, it's the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, where they get like these golden eggs and they're trying to figure out what to do with them and they have to take them underwater and then there's a secret message. And so I feel like with the golden egg, that's something that's, 
there is a secret message that is coming to you and you're only going to be able to find it in the thick of it, in the parts of yourself that maybe you put off looking at, maybe you run away from, don't want to notice. There is a secret message in there for you that will be coming to light should you choose to dive into yourself more over the next two weeks. Something beautiful and profound. And the golden egg, it is beautiful and profound. The message is important. It's a key element to you. And so I feel like over the next two weeks, should you make that decision, that's a blessing that's also waiting for you. Now we also have for you rainbow obsidian. I don't think I've ever seen this card and it says heal your heart. So that is something else that is coming. You know, this could be from your own work. This could also be your spiritual team, you know, that's the thing with having spirit guides, angels, a spiritual team is they always want to help, but we have to be willing to ask them for help. That's like the only problem with our spiritual team is we don't ask them enough. And at least that's what I always hear from mine. We don't ask enough. We think we can do everything on our own. And spirit is also saying like, it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask for heart healing. You don't have to do everything by yourself. And your spiritual team wants to help you do that. Um, this also could be like um, listening to heart chakra music or the sound bowls of like the heart chakra. I have on my Patreon a whole reading that I did on like imbalanced chakras that if you decide to become a patron um, or you already are at the highest tier, you can um, view that at any time. It's timeless. And you can go back to it again and again and kind of look at like what chakras might be imbalanced or, and there's also like a sound bath healing at the end of each reading for each chakra. So um, if you're interested in that, my Patreon's down below, but, um, I feel like it's really helpful. Even if you just want to listen to like the sound bath music in there, I worked really hard on that video. It's quite long. Um, and then we also have angel aura quartz lighten up. And I feel like this isn't telling you like, Oh, lighten up. It's you literally are going to feel like your load is getting lighter. And that is a blessing that I've heard from the very first card that you are, even if like some of the work feels really deep and scary, you are ultimately having your load lightened and things are going to feel less heavy two weeks from now, or within the next two weeks, you're going to start to feel a deep sense of relief from what you've been experiencing. And then we have two last cards of affirmation for you. So we have the affirmation of gratitude. Today, I am grateful for all the little things, even when the big things suck. There are always plenty of little things I can be at least a little grateful for, like hot showers and music and the fact that humans invented the internet and I'm allowed to use it whenever I want. Using fingers, and th sorry, using fingers and thumbs to do whatever I think them to do at any given moment. These cards are kind of silly, but I like them. So this is also like, obviously there are things that are going to be hard at any given point in life. You know, we, life isn't meant to be this big path of rainbows and sunshine. It's, there's a give and a take. The pendulum swings back and forth, right? And mostly you are being asked to remind yourself of the good things that you do have, because what you what you attract multiplies, right? Or what you, what you express in gratitude multiplies. And so it's like, you know, we're reminding the universe, ah, oh, more of that, please. Thank you. And then we also have connection in, I'm connected to the multitudes and I can access their support at any time. Even a stranger offers a sense of comfort when they smile at me or make a dumb comment about the weather. Everyone is waiting to connect. All I need to do is open myself up and pay attention. Note to self, work on witty banter and weather related stuff. So I like this because I literally just told you like your spiritual team, the biggest problem we have is that we don't ask enough. We don't connect enough. And so I do feel like if that really resonates with you, you know, put out the call. Um, there are so many ways to interact with your spiritual team. I feel like I need to do a video on candle magic at some point and how to use that to interact with your spiritual team, because I didn't realize that that wasn't just like common knowledge. I don't know why I feel like, and I've said this before, I feel like I was probably a witch in a past life because some of the stuff that I do, I'm also a chaos, witch, which is different than being like eclectic or, um, you know, any other kind of, witch. it's a little bit different, but like, there's no rules basically. And, 
um, I didn't realize that a lot of people like don't, don't know that stuff, like, because it just was stuff that came very naturally to me. And so let me know down below if that's something you're ever interested in. But ultimately, you don't have to do it through candles. You can literally do it through prayer. And, and I'm not talking like just praying to God. I mean, it can be similar if God is an entity that you believe in, but you know, it can be very simple. It can be looking up at the stars and whispering a few sentences. Just know that it usually comes from the stillest, smallest places. And you are worthy of that connection. There's nothing that you will ever do or say. Spirit is saying, telling me to tell you this. There's nothing that you could ever do or say in this lifetime that's going to make your spiritual team or like your angels, your ancestors, your spirit guides, God, the universe. There's nothing that you're ever going to say or do in this lifetime that would make them not want to be there for you. That's not really how love works. And it's unconditional, meaning it has no condition. So know that you're allowed to reach out and have that connection. And if that calls to you, if it doesn't, that's also totally okay. I'm never trying to push a belief system on anybody or make people think the way that I do. But I do feel like if that's something that you've been wanting, like spirit is really saying, like, please make the connection. So that is what I have for you. Pile number two. I love you so incredibly much. Do not forget when you stand on your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. And uh, I, if you feel called to do so, it is never an expectation, but always appreciated. I have my cash app Venmo and PayPal listed down below for you. I do accept tips for my readings, but again, I don't expect it. And, um, if you would like to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, I am putting out new content this month and horoscopes are going to come out later this month over there. So definitely make sure that you're following and, um, my Patreon, if you want extra content, you want to support my channel in that way. It's a huge help to me and, uh, you get like more videos for it. You get content that you don't see here, early access to all of my pick a cards. Um, there's like early access to podcast stuff, early access to horoscopes, weekly energy updates where I do like a reading of the week for the collective. So there's all kinds of goodies over there. If you want to go check it out, I would love to have you in that part of our community. Uh, link is going to be down below for you. And I will talk to you all again real soon. I love you so much, pumpkin. Bye. Hello there, pile number three. If you chose this beautiful amethyst crystal, then this is going to be your reading. So for you, we have the Nine of Swords, the Six of Cups, Judgment, and the Four of Pentacles. And so I feel like the blessings that are coming for you in the next two weeks, if any of you have really been struggling with your like worries, doubts, fears, um, and just not having like a good grip on your own reality, Spirit is saying that you're actually going to start to work through this and that things are going to be getting better. Um, like, I feel like there is kind of a message in the chaos for you that is trying to come up as a blessing, but <clears throat> you're finally going to be in a place where you're open to it and can actually start the healing process. So with the six of cups, normally this card is all about like the past. And I do think that part of it, especially if we are getting healing, I'm getting big healing vibes from this reading, um, especially from like the healing perspective. Sometimes we do kind of have to dive into the past to get there. But interestingly enough, this six of cups also kind of shows like a bunch of people getting together and having like, it looks like every cup is like doing something different. Like we almost have like a two of cups energy in here too, which is interesting. There's these two people cheersing. Then it reminds me of the two of cups, which is an intimate relationship. So maybe there's something that has kind of gone away or gone like upset between you and a partner or you and a friend. And I feel like ultimately this is going to be dissipating over the next two weeks. That is a big blessing coming for you. Um, I also hear that if you felt really lonely for any reason recently, you're also going to be surrounded by people that want to help you and cheer you up and like laugh and sing and like have a lot of like joyful moments with you over the next two weeks or sometime in the next two weeks. So don't say no to every invitation that comes your way. Um, I would definitely say be open to meeting others or even if it's like virtually, you know, be open to spending time with other people because I also 
ultimately think that this is going to be a big part of your own personal healing. And oh, sorry, my ring just clicked the table as I was bringing my hand up. <laughs> um, but I do feel that basically the people around you is what I'm hearing are very important. If you have friends or if you have like, even if it's like an online group of friends, like online friends are still friends. Um, I am hearing that there are people that want to support you. So maybe be a little more open, um, over the next two weeks. Then with judgment coming out, um, let me look at this card actually. Like, let me hold it up to my face. This card is really interesting. Hmm. Okay. So we have judgment normally is the card that it's not about like literal judgment day. It's, it's about standing tall in your authenticity and having other people listen to what you have to say because it's valuable. And notice though, I think this card is so beautiful. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but there's people in these bubbles down here and it's like they are lost in their own reality and their own version of their own reality. And they can't see how much more beautiful life can be. And then we, but we do have some people that are coming up out of these bubbles that are like, Oh, it can be different. And I feel like ultimately there's something about you pile number three that is very different. And, or maybe you do things that are kind of non mainstream. I mean, I'm hearing that it could be spiritual or like psychic ability based, not everyone, but I say that because you chose the amethyst and amethyst is known as the channeling stone. When you are trying to channel, um, when you are trying to channel, uh, your spiritual team, when you are trying to channel angels or even just your ancestors, amethyst can be an amplifier for that. And it can help you to unlock your psychic gifts. And so it makes me wonder if maybe some of you feel that you have certain gifts or you're working on them, but you're doing it more in secret. And I think ultimately the gift that is coming is you're going to be either introduced to someone from the past that you're going to really click with in the next two weeks, or there is some Someone just brand new coming into your circle that is going to be really powerful for you to connect with them because they are going to see you. I just got the chills, y'all. They are going to see you as the person that you are authentically, not the mask that you wear around other people. And I think this is going to be a very healing connection for you because they love the authentic person that you are underneath everything that society has said you've had to be. And they're here to listen and to cheer you on and to remind you that it's okay to be this person unapologetically. And then we have the four of pentacles, which this card, I feel like you might get a little in your head about this connection. Um, maybe in the past you've been burned by people or you feel like you don't have friends. And I kind of heard that when I started talking about the six of cups, I heard this like, but I don't have friends. Um, they, it, this could also be like a close family member too. Um, I always like to say that, you know, we might get like the siblings or parents or whatever that we were born into, but what a beautiful thing when a family member also becomes your friend because you, you know, maybe didn't get to choose the family, but you do get to choose the friends that you decide to let into your realm. And what a beautiful thing when, um, a family member is also a friend. I say this to my, one of my siblings all the time. Um, my sister, Cammie, I, she might be listening. I tell her all the time, you're not just my sister, Cammie, you're my best friend. Like you, you're, you're more than that to me. And she is, she's a queen. We love her. We stand. Um, if any of you have ever come to my Twitch live streams, you know who my sister Cammie is. Um, she comes and hangs out in the chat sometimes. She's incredible. Anyways, beside the point, um, my human self just loves to put their, it's two cents in here sometimes. Um, back, back to you, back to the reading. But with the four of pentacles, I do feel like you might be questioning the connection a little bit, but spirit is ultimately saying like, let yourself rest in this. Know that it is safe to be open to this new connection, because I feel like this is something that you've asked for. And that is why the gift is coming. Um, we're going to be moving into, so we're in Leo season right now. If you're watching this as it's current, which of course it's always going to be timeless for when you come across it. But, um, we will be in headed into Virgo season next. And I don't feel like, I mean, 
Leo season to an extent, but I don't really feel like either of those signs really resemble ultimate peak friendship. I would say like Aquarius definitely gives that off and so does Gemini, but um, you might have 11th or third house placements in Leo or Virgo. So definitely make sure you check that out. If you, you can get your chart read or you can't get your chart read, but you can get your chart for free. I like the website astro dash seek. It's like astro. And then there's a dash. It's not the word dash. It's like a actual line dash seek.com. Um, I like it because it is consistently updated. Astro cafe is kind of outdated. And I know a lot of people like that one, but always go with whatever you think, but you can see there where your 11th and third house placements are. So just check, see if we have Virgo or Leo coming up for you there. Um, or this person might be a sun moon rising in either Leo or Virgo. That could be part of it too. Um, these are just signs that your spiritual team is saying, like, look out for these. So let's go ahead and take a look at what else we have here. So we have for you the card of the essential and we have for you the ace of air. So the essential, this card is really about being the keeper of your own keys. <laughs> it's about being your own protector, your own safety mechanism, and you have deep wisdom and secrets within you. And you're very protective, I think, of who, again, I, I get this really strong indication, pile number three, that you've been burned before. And you're very, very careful with who you give your time and energy to at all times. And the essential, like this is wise. This isn't a bad thing that you do. I actually think that it has kept you safe, but spirit is saying sometimes it does keep us a little too guarded. Um, and it, it's okay to let people pass through. It's okay to, I mean, this is, this is the difference between having a wall and a boundary. Boundaries allow the people that we love to pass through and still connect with us while not disrupting our boundary. And a wall just shuts everybody out. So I do feel like when it, that's like really what spirit is saying is like, you know, be mindful of your walls. You might have walls that you have built up around you because of this and the blessing that wants to come forward, you are going to have to kind of let some of that guard down, even if it's a little scary, um, that's just kind of like a warning, I guess, with the blessing and the ACE of air says, um, I also feel like your voice is getting like amplified in some way. You're getting like more courage to speak your truth. And I think it's also going to be because of like the support that you find. Um, you're going to be a lot more courageous in speaking your truth because that's what the ace of air is all about or the one of air. It's all about speaking your truth and having the courage to do it. It's also a gift directly from the universe. Aces or ones always talk about gifts from the universe that are bestowed upon us, but we have to decide what we do with that energy. So this can be a new idea, a new thought of philosophy, a new teaching, something that you learn that comes to your mind. It, um, air deals with the intellect and the mind. And so something about like you're getting an upgrade there in the next two weeks. And maybe, like I said, those of you that have really been suffering, um, the nine of swords really to me is like the worry or like the anxiety card, not an anxiety diagnosis. Like that's, I try not to, and I've said this before, I try not to even use that word because I do think that we shouldn't be using tarot to like give medical diagnosis. Like I just don't think that that's safe or smart. Medical diagnoses should be left to a professional in the medical field. Um, but I do feel like the nine of swords often comes across as like the anxiety card of like the feelings of anxiety and being very anxious. Um, but I do feel like with the ace of air, this might calm down a little bit, dissipate a little bit. And that's, again, that was like the original blessing I feel like we were coming into. So we also have for you the card of alchemy. And we'll read that one in a second. And we have the shark. So with alchemy, we have the frequency of alchemy activates our magical ability and remembrance of the magic that we all hold inside. Each of us has the potential to access the ancient knowledge that allowed the true alchemist to perform the miracles of transmutation. So 
I'm wondering if y'all are getting like, first of all, just getting like energy healings and downloads in general from like your spiritual team, or maybe you're actually seeing like a Reiki or an energy healer, because I feel like something about your energy is also getting like a healing and it maybe will even lead you to wanting to go into that field, wanting to learn more. Um, there's actually a book that I'm reading right now that some of you might be interested in. I will link it down below for you. It is The Emotion Code by Bradley Nelson, I believe. Um, it's something that came highly recommended to me by someone else. And it's fascinating information. Um, it's not necessarily Reiki or energy healing. It's about like removing trapped stored emotion in the body because this is something I talk about all the time being somebody that loves spirituality and psychology and I am constantly working to bridge the gap because I think that they really do go together but um that's something that we talk about here a lot that sometimes when we experience something that causes a trauma response to develop or it, it will store in the body and we can't always think our way through it. We have to be able to feel our way through it and feel our way out of it and release it through the body. And so I feel like this is also something that like spirit wants you to know that you have the ability to release what is being stored. And it might take some time to understand, to learn, to follow the ideas, but ultimately you have the power to do this. And you may, like I said, even want to seek someone out that already does these things just to kind of get a feel for it, to see if it's for you, but you are the one true alchemist alchemist. Everybody is, everybody is an alchemist and we are able to transmute energy. It's just a skill and a tool that the mass majority of us have not been taught how to use. So spirit is here to remind you, like, especially if you feel unworthy to learn or do these things, those of you that have had that feeling, you're not, you are absolutely worthy to, and you are more than allowed It's like your birthright to have that ability. Um, and with the shark card, I feel that this card, it can be kind of an aggressor, <laughs> like sharks can be a little aggressive. And I actually think based on blessings though, this is about you aggressively pursuing what it is that you want. So I do feel that, especially in the pursuit of your own healing, because like I said, I feel like this pile has been exceptionally about healing. In the pursuit of your own healing journey, I do feel like something is going to ignite you to aggressively pursue. And this doesn't mean you're like hurting other people or anything like that. It's that you will stop at nothing to find what it is that will heal, that will help you to move through and to change the place that you've been in. So I think this is going to be really beautiful, actually. <clears throat> And then we also have for you Amazonite, loosen your grip and ocean Jasper, schedule yourself in. Ooh, ooh, these cards reading you for the filth. Okay. <laughs> so with Amazonite, loosen your grip. I feel like the reason that maybe you're feeling a lot of upset or worry or anxious thoughts, racing thoughts, if this is you and this is resonating with you it's because you are trying to control an outcome. And the best thing you can do right now, Spirit is saying, as you receive these blessings of true healing, is to loosen your grip on how you think it should be and how you think it should go. Because ultimately, it probably will be different than you expect. And with Ocean Jasper, schedule yourself in. This is like a beat down from the universe because when I see this card, this is saying you are potentially one of those people that's like, I don't have time for me. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to do A, B, and C. And you constantly put your own tending to self, your own healing, your own shadow work. You constantly put it by the wayside. You avoid your tarot deck. You avoid your journal. You avoid watching videos or doing meditations. And I know I've been there. I am there currently it's me I'm bitches um that's a that's like a meme it's me I'm bitches but like I get it but at the same time if you especially if you feel like you don't have time you have to start making the time 
And even if it's just a couple of hours on a certain day of the week, you know, schedule that time in for yourself and make it a promise, make it a commitment. Spirit is saying that you will receive nothing but blessings if you start to incorporate that, incorporate your own healing and how important it is to you. And because I, I get the sense that it is important to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on this reading here, like hearing all of this. So we have two cards of affirmation for you. So we have vitality. I am healthy and vital and strong. My radiant love of life fills me with healthy, vital, and strong cells. Each cell is a warrior. Everyone has its own sword and shield. I dare you to try and penetrate my cellular army. Don't think so, chump. <laughs> so I feel like if any of you don't feel safe in the body... Why do I feel like this is my pile? Out of all three of the piles today, I feel like sometimes the cards read me for the filth too. I feel like this one was like my pile as well. So if you chose it, I think we're on the same vibe. Um, if you don't feel like safe in your body for whatever reason, these are good affirmations to give to yourself. You know, I am healthy and vital and strong. My radiant love of life fills me with healthy, vital and strong cells. And speak those words over yourself. Again, you are the alchemist. Those, it will do something. We call words spelling because they cast spells. So we also have for you trust. Ooh, I just got the chills again. This is a good card. Okay. I trust that everything will be okay in the end, partly because I simply know it in my gut, but also because it's way more fun to live with trust and confidence than to be a defensive whiner. Or I think it says, does that say whiner? No, that says wiener, a defensive wiener. <laughs> That's funny. These cards always have like a silly thing at the end, but I like this card because you have this bear walking this tightrope. Um, let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it now. Um, but it's blindfolded. And I feel like that's kind of the journey that you're on right now. It feels very blindly led, but you just need to trust where you're going. And I know when we don't have self-trust, it can be very hard to trust anything or anyone. But ultimately... Self-trust is the thing that we need the most. And I've talked about this before. I, I'm going to bring in one of my friends to guest on my podcast, I think, eventually. And when I feel ready to do it and they have the time to talk about self-trust. Because I feel like I am by no means an expert, but I feel like this is a topic that really plagues our current reality where people just don't trust their ability to alchemize, don't trust their ability to heal, don't trust their ability to do magic, don't trust their ability to make changes in their life. And to me, self-trust is the core foundation of what we need to build our entire self upon. Now, there are other pillars that can help support us, but if we don't have self-trust, it's going to make everything else harder to do. So um, definitely consider like doing some affirmation on vitality and trust during this process. Spirit is saying that's what you need right now. And best of luck on your healing journey. I think you've got this. I think in the next two weeks, you're going to see some very like moderate improvements. And I think you're going to be feeling a lot better than you have. So I love that for you. I love it for me. Um, do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. Don't forget to check out Liv's video. It's going to be linked down below. As I said, she is doing guidance. So make sure you go see what guidance you need over the next two weeks. And and um, if you would like to, it is never a requirement, but I have my Cash App Venmo PayPal listed down below. Uh, if you would like to tip me for my readings, it is always appreciated, um, never expected though. So that will be down below for you as well as my Patreon. If you want to support the channel that way and get some extra content for yourself, um, you can head over there and also my Instagram and TikTok. I'm at Chloe Taylor. Um, and I, that is my only account. If you ever see somebody impersonating me, I have the handle at Chloe Taylor spelled exactly like it is here. No spaces. Um, if you ever see somebody else trying to sell you a reading or something, first of all, I would never do that. So if you see it, they're probably an imposter account um, and report them always. We've been seeing a lot of that in the tarot community lately. But anywho, I love you so much, pumpkin. Best of luck. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.